Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are reviewing the Rupes LK900E Bigfoot Millet, which is a forced rotation, dual action machine polisher. Guess that I am wrong or how We're close now I've been making my amends Come and see Where have you been off to now? Wait for me Dear beloved, lend me light I wander off into the night Or I won't be Okay, so the Rupes Millet Forced Rotation Polisher. So for, for decades now, the Flex 3401 had almost like the monopoly or the reign on the uh, forced rotation market. But recently there's been some copies being made of the um, 34 out in China and Rupes as well have moved into this forced rotation market and Flex have also moved into the long throw free spinning market. So as Bert from PVD said, the, the gloves are well and truly off at the moment in the machine polishing world. So what is a forced rotation dual action polisher? I've done this speech so many times, I'm getting deja vu here. With your traditional free spinning dual action polishers, you have a bearing, okay? A free spinning bearing, which the plate is mounted into. That bearing is not in the center of the main axle, the tool wouldn't work very well. It's offset on the main axle. So as the axle rotates, the main bearing is sent around this orbit and that generates spin on the plate. So your plate spins um, with rotation and it is also goes around in an orbit. So you get a lot more scrub, you get a lot more heat generated in the pad, but you also spread the working load so it's not as aggressive. And the fact that it's free spinning means that the actual plate, um, you know, if you exert too much force or you're leaning, you actually can reduce or stall the spin, making the tools safer, but they, they lose something with that particular mechanism. So the difference with forced rotation polishers is they still have the free spinning bearing mounted offset in the main axle, but they have a set of gears. In the case of the 3401, the cogs or the gears are in the plate system. And those cogs rotate around a track on the inside of the shroud, which then causes the plate to spin the other direction um, because it's running around this track, the actual, the actual rotation is forced or driven, so you cannot slow it down, which makes the tool, still gives you the dual action movement, but the difference is the rotation is forced or fixed. So it, it solves some of the problems around plate stall and provides you with a level of consistency. 
Right, the rest of the basic spec options we're gonna run through on comparisons. The Rupes Mille has a five millimeter offset, which is a lot smaller, or significantly smaller than the eight millimeter offset on the Flex 3401. They're both rated at 200, 230 volts. Um, the Rupes Mille has a 900 watt output motor. You can't derive too much from that power in terms of how much torque it provides. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. It has an RPM rate of 265 through to 535. So a first simple comparison is there's less offset on this, but it has a higher rotational speed capability than the Flex 3401. Uh, it's a 3 16 thread fitment. It, the tool weighs 2.8 kilograms, comes with a two year warranty and has a nine, mil, nine meter, not nine millimeter, <laughs> nine meter cable with it. Hallelujah. So I've been using the tool now for a few hours to try and get a feel for what's, what this is offering you. Again, ideally you'd have the tool for a year and use it on 100 cars before you form that opinion and know it inside out. When you're doing these reviews, you don't get that luxury. But I've tried to go through and look at all the areas that I'm interested in. First up, vibration. Very important with these tools. The Rupes Melee, for me, has two very good things going for it. The level of vibrations, I think, are slightly less than the Flex 3401. Not significantly less, but slightly less. But the next thing, wobble. By having a shorter throw than the um, Flex 3408 and some of these other fixed rotation copy machines that are out there, by having that five millimeter throw, you get less wobble with the tool, which is an advantage. You're obviously having that throw to you're creating an orbit and the bigger that orbit the more kind of scrubbing you're going to be doing over the surface as as the rotational speeds will increase with the distance so you lose something in aggression there so what Rupers have done is they've for some reason they've upped the rotational speed of the tool um, but they've reduced the orbit size and one positive of doing that is that you get a little bit of a less wobble with these machines the next thing, heat buildup. There is an improvement with the Rupes Mille in how it manages heat buildup. Heat buildup in the tool, heat, heat buildup in the plates and the pad interface, and ultimately heat buildup in the pad and therefore on the panel. This machine seems to run slightly differently. It runs a lot cooler. The Flex 3401 picks up a lot of heat when you use it in the shroud. You need to lubricate the felt ring in the Flex 3401 to try and reduce the wear and tear and, and, and reduce that heat build up. This machine doesn't seem to, to warm up and get hot and toasty like the 3401. It also vents, I believe, some of that air through this plate system and that comes down through these holes as well. So you get a bit more airflow coming out of the side of the pl plate and the shroud and also through the pad itself to keep things cool. So that is an advantage and that's an improvement. Next thing, noise. You are probably gonna need to, um, you know, get the old ear defenders on when you're using this or the, the old sound deadening headphones with both of these tools. I would actually say the Rupes Mille seems slightly quieter. It's got more of a rumbly quality to it. than the uh, 3401, which has more of a sort of jet engine noise to it. Both of them you're gonna to need to mask up and I'm not really influenced by the noise levels coming out of either of these tools. They, they all kick out a fair bit of noise. Finally, tool ergonomics. There's some good things about this tool, the ergonomics that Rupes have done. One, I like this chunky Fisher-Price style <laughs> speed gauge that is just a lot easier to get your, th your thumb on. It doesn't require any force. It just clicks over to the next number and it's really easy to use. They've done a good job with that. That's an improvement. I think Rupert's probably, it's fair to say, have the best triggers out of all these tools. There's a little rubber grip on it. It's almost like, 
you know, when you get a car and it's got a nice accelerator pedal that you use and you're pressing and using that all the time. So the trigger mechanism on the Rupes Mill 8 is lovely. The rest of the tool feels pretty much like their long throw ones. It seems like it's the same body. The, um, the integrated kind of bow grip handle is really nice and you're gonna be kind of your hand, this hand here is either gonna be wrapped around there or on, on top and it has the rubber grips to kind of reduce vibration and make sure you've got a good hold of the machine. The only other ergonomic features that are worth mentioning on the Rupes is it has the two rubber stops so you can sit the tool down nice and safely like this and it's not gonna wobble over and your pad's not gonna hit, hit the deck so to speak. Right, let's move on to the pros and cons of this tool, guys. If you're looking to buy it, what are the good things? What are the bad things? Let's start with the negatives. This is quite simple to do. The first thing is the tools are expensive, okay? The Rupes brand do not offer you cheap um, bottom of market price tools. There are companies doing that that are out in China that do offer you good quality tools for a low price. Rupes could probably easily outsource their manufacturing over there and retain their prices still and make bigger margins, but they make the whole tool in-house, pretty much top to bottom. Um, and you know they're all about quality, and because of that, you pay a premium for it. Now, it's hard to say what the exact price of this tool is, because you can only get it in kit form, which, like I mentioned, some people won't like that, but I'm mindful about banging on too much about that, because probably by the time this video comes out, or some point in the future, the tool will be available um, as a tool-only option. But if you sort of subtract all the cost of the, the bits you get in the kit, I think the tool is looking like it's gonna be priced at around about 400 pounds, something like that, maybe just under 400 pounds, 399 would be a good price for it. Then it might be a little bit more. Um, so the tool on its own is reasonably expensive. The, the next technical um, negative that I can think of, and it's a pretty minor one, it's pretty self-explanatory, is that the tool is heavier than I would have liked it to have been at 2.8 kilos. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier on, I'd like the tool maybe to have been like as light as possible, 2.2, 2.3. Um, you know, the Flex Rotary P14 is around about 2.2 or 2.3. This has to have added components, so maybe it isn't possible to get a force rotation machine that's ultra lightweight, but it is what it is. It weighs 2.8 kilos, and that's a little bit on the heavy side. The final negative is not actually around the tool itself, so I don't want to bang on about this too much because I don't use flex, you know, I don't use flex's pad with the 3401. I go and look for a pad which works to me. And if I was buying this tool, I would probably do the same. I really struggled with this blue thin line pad. This pad dominated me, okay? I've got some footage of it pulling me around. This pad really bites into the paintwork. Um, now, Rupes, like I mentioned, have developed their own um, abrasive for it, which is a lot more slippy. And I started using this with one particular abrasive, and I was getting pulled around. I primed the pad properly. Um, you know, it was all covered, but still, it, this, this pad is very aggressive, that cutting pad, and it really grips on the paintwork. I moved over to S3 Gold and, it, and saw an improvement, but still struggled a little bit to control the tool. You know, it made me look a bit like that video with when Reg was using a rotary and it was all over the place. Um, what I found was I went inside and soaked this pad in nice warm water, got it all soft and then took the water out, brought it back in and that helped a little bit. This pad definitely needs benefits from getting warmed up, but it's a very aggressive cutting pad. Um, beyond the fact that it's just aggressive, I'm not a fan of the thin pads. Now, you know, Rupert say they give you more control, less distortion, fair enough, it does that. It cuts like crazy as well. It's one of the most kind of, um, it's one of the most coarsest cutting pads I think I've ever used. But I just feel it doesn't take up the contours of the panels well. And when you're trying to polish over curved surfaces, um, it doesn't hit it all and you have to kind of go back and sort of go in at different angles to make sure you get it all. The moment I put Rupes, the Rupes standard kind of cone pad that they use for their long throw machines, their dual action polishers, the moment I put their green pad on this machine, it suddenly changed and it just felt so familiar and smooth and easier to handle and actually more control. So, um, for me, pad choice is always very important with tools and you can use whatever you like and whatever works for you. But I think a thicker pad 
on these tools makes them slightly easier to operate and I found it gave me more control. The green pad is less coarse as well, so it's still quite an aggressive pad, but it doesn't bite as much and doesn't pull you around as much. And the fact it's thicker will take up the contours a lot better. Now there probably are some negatives around there that these thicker pads might not might not last as long on the um, on the forced rotation machine but um, if I had more time I would be exploring kind of pad options with the tool itself because um, the tool is really good so those are the three negatives that I could um, come up with from using the tool and they're all pretty minor things let's go on to the positives so first of all the obvious ones the cable length nine meters is fantastic they should do that on every single power tool that's why did the hallelujah thing it's just it should be there it's a heavy duty long cable and you don't have to get the extension lead down you know it's, it sounds obvious but very few of the machine polishers are doing that and they have you know three or four meter cables that are no use to anybody um, next positive is this machine doesn't wobble quite as much because of the long throw and it's nice and smooth once you get going with it you get you have to when you ever use use a new tool you have to make some little adjustments with this it's a slightly different balance to the 3401 once you get the hang of it um, the tool feels nice and smooth doesn't wobble around a little bit closer to using a rotary although it's, it's nowhere near as smooth as a rotary it's never going to be because of that offset on the axle but they've done a good job with the, the, the changing the dynamics they could have just copied what Rupes uh, what flex did sorry with an eight mil throw and a similar sort of orbit size but they've done it a different way because they believe it's better and um, there are some advantages in that way and one of them is less wobble the next big positive is there is definitely less heat build up through this tool so they thought about the new air the airflow system through the pad and the plate seems to work really well in reducing heat so that's a good job the tool itself the most the thing that everyone wants to know is how good is it at cutting paintwork okay now this tool is a bit of a beast. It's a powerful machine. You will not slow it down and it cuts very, very well. And like I said, or might have said um, in some of the previous footage, one of the advantages of the fixed rotation is when you're going around the edges of, of certain panels and you want to just lean in a little bit to get those edges, make sure you're correcting right up to the edge. Um, this tool won't slow down. So you can get that kind of consistency. When you're using those free spinning DAs, they are brilliant when you've got them flat and they they work well when you've got them flat but when you're not using them on flat panels or you're leaning in or you're trying to edge that's when you stall the rotation um, so they, these have got a definite advantage in that in that particular area the disadvantage is the tool fights you a little bit more okay it will walk you around a little bit more um, so it's it's a trade-off really but you kind of get used to the fact that the tool walks you around and it like I've said in other videos as well it does force you to kind of start to automatically keeping it level so um, that's the trade-off with free spinning DAs and force rotation DAs one other big positive or it, not big positive but it's a positive is that Rupes have designed this system to spin clockwise which is a nice little thing you know because the flex the flex, because the motor spins the same way as all their other tools, then the plate is going to spin the other way as it runs around the gearing. So I'm assuming Rupes have developed the motor to run the other way around, so that when it hits the gearing, it actually runs clockwise, which is it's 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 ideal. You know, you'd want it that way if you could pick, so it spins the same way as all your other tools. But it doesn't make that much difference. But it's still a positive. I believe that pound for pound, you know, if you're using the same abrasives and the same pad choices if you could compare the rupes lk 900 e mille bigfoot <laughs> i can never remember all the names with their um with their free spinning offering the lhr 15 um mark 2 es their long throw machine i think you this machine will deliver you more cut and more consistent cut um, so that's that's important when you're compounding and cutting with polishing you're probably there is no real advantage or disadvantage all of these machine polishers can refine paint very nicely because these finishing polishes they don't resist the pad they don't need to be worked quite as hard they they spin over the paintwork a lot easier so even even your standard DAS um, you know DAS 6 pros can finish down 
um, paintwork very nice. So there's advantages with cutting paintwork and there's, there's no real advantages with refining or finishing as far as I can tell. Um, another good thing is when you buy the tool, you are kind of ready to go. You haven't got to ever buy any other accessories in terms of plates and pads and bolt on things. You have all you need there. You can pick your pad choices. You can pick your abrasive choices as well and you're ready to go. In terms of trusting Rupes, because they've they the fact they're selling you the kit, they really want you to use their kind of flat pads and uh, their abrasives. I would be interested to see what their melee abrasive is like, because I I I'm guessing it needs to have heavy lubrication in it with their system to to reduce this cutting um, pad in particular from sticking to the um, sticking to the panel and pulling you around a little bit more. Um, you only, when you do sign up and buy this, buy this kit, you only get one of each pad, so it's really more like a taster to see if you get on with it. Um, but like I said earlier on, I would probably be exploring using thicker pads, which is down to personal choice, and it isn't really a deficiency of the tool that we're reviewing here. Finally, guys, a big thank you to uh, Clean and Shiny for loaning me this tool to do the review. You know, without that, Forensics, Forensics Detailing Channel does not have the budget to go and buy every new power tool that's that's released, and I don't need them. Um, so it's it's really kind of them to let me do it for the review. In turn, of course, I'm going to be putting a link to the Clean and Shiny um, website in the description where you can buy the standard or the deluxe kit, and when the tool only option comes out, I'll update it and put that in. Um, Clean and Shiny, if you don't know about them they're one of the big online kind of distributors of de detailing products that they sell stuff for more brands that I can ever list so if you are buying stuff from them you can get all your abrasives your polishing pads whatever you need they sell it at the same time so it's always, it's always handy to know so thank you very much clean and shiny um, and that is the Rupes Bigfoot Melee uh, video review <laughs> What else is coming on the Forensics Detailing channel? Well, the M135 has gone off to pastures new and I've upgraded to an M140, which is virtually virtually the same car, although there's a bit more to it than that. But um, I went for Melbourne Red, which I'm still not sure about, but I think, it, I think it'll be okay once it's all cleaned up, polished up and looking good. So we're gonna be doing a few practical videos on getting this car to where it needs to be and getting it all kind of protected and that sort of stuff. Probably be putting the Geon Synchro kit on it. You know, I've been debating a lot in my mind about whether ceramics are right for me. And the sort of definitive answer to that is, quite simply, do you want to put that package on your car? And I do. So I suppose that kind of answers the question. I can't wait to get it all polished and get that Synchro kit on there. Um, so that'll be coming on the channel. So um, as always, please subscribe, like, and all that sort of stuff, because that helps the channel. Everything's going really good. Looking forward to summer and lots more videos to come on the Forensics Detailing channel. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. i